argue to the jury that Judge Glanville was biased. And that is admissible because it all happened in front of the jury. And from just Judge Glanville's demeanor, and, and I'm not here to hurt Judge Glanville. In fact, I like Judge Glanville. But I don't know what happened in this case, but I like him before this case. But the way he conducted himself to people in this courtroom, I've never really seen a judge do. So I want to ask Mr. Copeland, it is very important to me to explain that he was taken against his desire into Judge Glanville's chambers, that he was with Judge Glanville, Ms. Hilton, his lawyer. I'll make it all perfect if I don't, you know, you could admonish me and the state can correct me, but I'm not here to, to snowball anybody. But to say that I, I can exclude statements of Judge Glanville and most importantly, the conscious or subconsciousness of this witness, because I believe, and I have not spoken with him, Your Honor. I've not spoken with his lawyer about it, but I believe that Mr. Copeland will truthfully say that he believed that Judge Glanville and the state of Georgia are one. And that comes out when Judge Glanville specifically says, and I don't remember the transfer page right now, but it's something to the effect of, we need your testimony. There's no we. Nobody needs, nobody needs anybody's testimony. If he didn't want to testify, I've had witnesses tell me I'm not testifying. We subpoena them and come to court. They're held in contempt. There's nothing that the judge can do because the judge can't give um, immunity, so they can't compel the person to do it. So the person invokes the Fifth Amendment and they just leave. That, that is unfortunate, but that's a reality. There is no we. So with all that being said, I'm making an attorney proffer that if you prevent me from doing that, and Judge Glanville prevented me also already, I'm, I'm just telling you, he prevented me from cross-examining um, Agent Racy. He's an FBI agent on misstatements made by the prosecution, knowing misstatements, knowing the prosecution, it's Ms. Hilton, knew that a gentleman who's the same last name as a court reporter entered an invalid coerced guilty plea. Judge Glanville stopped me again from getting into the truth of that matter. It's never been corrected. Um, the point I'm trying to make to you is that all came out in front of the jury. So yes, I am going to intend to do, I will follow your rule, obviously, but I will intend, I intend to cross-examine Mr. Copa, not only what was said by Ms. Hilton, but what was said by Judge Glanville. I will be respectful. I'm not, I'm not here to, you know, throw some odd names about Judge Glanville. I will just be very specific. And then if he doesn't answer my questions, I'm stuck with his answer of, I don't recall or whatever has been going on in this courtroom. But um, I don't believe that you should limit the cross-examination. I didn't, I didn't do that. You know, all that to me, that was very hurtful to me. And I, I don't mean hurtful. I mean, you know, it's it's a it was offensive to our law because he's the one who, God forbid, gets sentenced. If I lose.